This video is sponsored by Codeco.com. Hey everyone, Vegetarian Zombie here, and we are continuing our exploration of C Sharp by diving into the world of variables. In terms of programming, you can think of variables as individual atoms in your scripts. They are the core building blocks for building your games. You may be new to programming, but you've been using variables your whole life. Take this simple equation, x equals a plus b. In this case, you substitute 1 for a and 2 for b. x thereby equals 3. In a tabletop role-playing game like Pathfinder, you have a character sheet that has strength, dexterity, and so forth. These contain numbers to indicate the value, so when someone asks, what's your strength, you may say 12, or negative 2 in my case. Strength is a variable. C Sharp is a strongly typed language, so you must signify the type of variable you are using. You define a variable by putting the type before the variable name, and you make sure to put it after the access modifier. In this case, we have a variable called hit points. It's a type of int or integer. This is just a number and we set it to 32. There are lots of types in C-sharp, and soon you'll even define your own. You'll learn more about types in the next episode. Sometimes we don't want our variables to change. In such cases, we precede them with the const keyword. Here we define the amount of hours in a day as a constant. If you try to change it later in the script, you'll get an error. Let's put variables to action. But before we do that, Here's a message from my sponsor, Codeco. Codeco is a site for developers made by developers. With hundreds of instructors from around the world, you can learn about topics such as native iOS development, native Android development, and even multi-platform development with Flutter. Codeco also features hundreds of free articles, including topics on game development, covering both Unity and Unreal. As a pro subscriber, you can access a library of thousands of videos on a range of development topics. The curated learning paths are designed to teach the basics of development in a friendly and supportive way. Pro subscribers also have complete access to all the books at Kadeco, such as the Unity Apprentice, that aims to teach you Unity by creating a series of different games. Get started on your programming journey today by heading on over to Kadeco.com. Here I have my sample project open from when we last left off in the previous episode. If you are just following along, check out the previous episode on how to set up the project. We want to create a new script. Let's use our previous script as a starting point. In the project browser, select the Hello World script. Copy and paste it. Now we have a new copy. Single click on the script to rename it and rename it to my variables. Now let's drag it onto the text game object in the hierarchy. Right away, we'll get an error. Changing the file name is not enough. Let's look deeper. Double click on the script to open it up in your code editor. Notice there are lots of red squiggles. The reason for all the errors is that we duplicated a script. When we change the file name, the actual script name is still Hello World. When it comes to scripts, every script must be unique. Change the name to my variables. Save the file. Now all the errors go away. When working in a language like C-sharp, errors can cascade from a single source. A good strategy is to fix the topmost error and work your way down. Okay, let's make some variables. Let's track a user's health. Add the following. Here we defined a private variable, meaning by default, the Unity editor won't see it. I'll be covering access modifiers in depth in a later episode. The variable is called health, and it's an integer. That is a simple number. 
notice the variable starts lowercase. Also remember to add a semicolon. This entire line is called a statement, and as mentioned in the previous episode, every statement must end with a semicolon. Let's define a new variable. Believe it or not, this is a completely different variable, even though it's named health. When creating a variable, lowercase letters are considered different than uppercase letters. This variable is also different. By convention, variables start lowercase, so let's create a variable called myHealth. Ack, another error. Can you guess why? Variables must be one word, otherwise c -sharp becomes confused. Updated to the following. Notice we have two words combined into one. The first letter is lowercase and each subsequent word is uppercased. Let's create another one. As you can see, it's much easier to read. When defining your variables, start all your variables with a lowercase letter. No numbers or symbols. The variable should be a noun, a person, place, or thing. There are times when you'll see a single letter variable, such as in this loop. Don't worry about the code yet. We'll get to that soon. Just look at the variable. Notice it's called I, meaning iterator. This is just a running convention that spans decades in this type of loop. You'll see it everywhere. That's just one of the few places where you should use a single letter variable. Why follow these conventions? It makes our code easier to read and understand. When working with more than one person, it's critical for you to all be on the same page. Just one last note, make sure your variable names are descriptive. That way, six months down the road, you'll understand exactly what that variable does. The last thing you want to do is start going back through your code to figure out what this variable is. Now let's make a constant. With constants, we start with an uppercase. In some cases, you'll see constants defined as all uppercase with spaces represented by underscores. We're going to use the previous version, which is a Microsoft standard. As is the case, there are different conventions for different cases that is typically documented in what is known as a style guide. For this course, I'm using Unity's official style guide and defaulting to Microsoft's style guide when a feature isn't documented like constants. No matter what convention you use, the key thing is to be consistent with your usage. Okay, let's change our score. You'll see that we run into an error because we can't change constants after we've defined them. Let's delete the code and our script no longer produces an error. Now there's actually one more way to declare variables and I'll introduce it to you in a later episode and there's a good reason for that. But before we close out, notice the green messages above start and update. Those aren't written in code. They're what is known as comments. C-sharp ignores everything after the two forward slashes. 
Comments are useful for leaving messages to other developers, such as explaining the reasoning behind tricky code. There's definitely an art to writing comments. For now, let's leave a simple message. Now every developer who opens this file understands the purpose of it. You'll also see developers use comment to comment out code. This keeps the code in the document, but it isn't run. Let's comment out our player score. For multiple lines, we use forward slash asterisk to open a comment. Notice it comments out the rest of the script. To close it, we use an asterisk forward slash. This is producing errors because we've effectively removed two important variables from the code. So let's revert that change. Now we're back in business. That's it for this episode. Feel free to play around with variables. Of course, you can only make strings and numbers at this point. You need more types to play with. And yes, C-sharp comes with a ton of them, which we'll explore in the next episode.